Thank you very much. Good evening. Anyway, it's great to be back in, in, in Kilkenny. And uh, as usual, I met somebody today who wanted to be reassured, a middle-aged lady. I hope now that what we're going to get this evening from you will be family entertainment. <laughs> I reassured her <laughs> that it would be. I didn't tell her the family I had in mind <laughs> was the Sopranos. <laughs> but anyway, uh, as I say, it's nice to be in Kilkenny again. I've always had a very ambivalent uh, relationship with Kilkenny. Most Cork people have, <laughs> for reasons which we will not go into yet. Uh, but anyway, I also want to thank you, incidentally, for your money. You know, that's very important, because I brought a packet of Daz and I'm going to launder it before I go home. <laughs> But anyway, I read about the relationship with Kilkenny. In my case, it's a very odd thing. When I was a kid in Cork, we had uh, a gramophone, and you wound it up, you know, the old wax disc and so on. And there was a comedian from Cork called Dickie Forbes who had this little verse on it. One day in Kilkenny, I called on Miss Brown. She was up in her bathroom and couldn't come down. Said I slip on something, come down to me quick. She slipped on the soap and came down in a tick. So I thought that this was a very sort of sexy song at the age of 12. And it gave me a picture of Kilkenny, as, uh, especially considering the, <laughs> the sporting uh, contest between the two counties and so on, that uh, Kilkenny was uh, a place, you know, a city of whores and hurlers. <laughs> Admittedly, the hurling has declined a bit, <laughs> but, but anyway, uh, anyway, uh, we are meeting in the season of um, self-mortification, well, we were supposed to be anyway, this time of the year and so on, coming up to Easter, as we all know, and there was a man at, in my place in Cork, and he went to his wife and he said, no, you know, you know, he just a couple of weeks ago, he said, you know, no, like this season, that's in it, and all that, like, you know, for the next six weeks, we won't be having any sex. She said, for why? <laughs> he said, because it is Lent. Who did you lend it to? <laughs> And uh, so there we are. Anyway, before I leave my, my native city and so on, I, I noticed that, you see, it's the city of culture, that's why I was back there. I didn't find any, but, <laughs> but uh, I did notice, because I'd seen it in the paper, that it was the 20th anniversary of the moving statues. And I said to someone, like, whatever happened to moving statues? No, 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 nobody talks about, oh, you're a delight guy, you're a delight you're a delight guy. There's a couple of them still playing for Billy Morgan's team, but apart from that. <laughs> so anyway, we are f faced now with, um, with the Olympics. Uh, my own favourite uh, story of the Olympics goes back to the time when I was in Atlanta. And uh, there was a man from my own part of the world, he went into a pub in Atlanta, and he went up to the barman and he said, uh, Come here, uh, I'm, I'm looking for a lady. I was told I might find her here. She could be here. Uh, her name is uh, Harrington, Hannah Harrington. And the bartender said, you mean Hannah the hooker? <laughs> oh, <laughs> is that what they call her here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Irish broad. She works here, yeah, Fredhead. There she is, she's down there at the end of the bar. Go and talk to her, she's working now. So he went down and he said, uh, Hello, Hannah. <laughs> she said, Look, cut the cackle, I don't have time to waste. I'm a working girl, okay? If you want to do business, it's upstairs, $200 for one hour. Otherwise, don't bother me, okay? Okay? He said, Oh, no, no, that's fine, that's fine. We go upstairs, that's fine. So they went upstairs and um, the $200 changed hands. The money was, uh, and the business were concluded. Such as it was, I mean, it didn't take very long, because he was an Irishman after all. <laughs> Female laughter, no male laughter. 
But anyway, uh, she said, this is, you know, this is very good. Yes, that was a real quickie, you know, this is good business, you know. She said, uh, money for old love. She said, how about, are you going to be around for long? You, you know, you want to come in and get, oh, I was thinking, you know, would you be here this evening? Because I'm just going on to look at some of the Olympics. Like, I'll be back in the evening. Oh, well, I'll be here, I'll be here. I'm a working girl. So anyway, later on, 7 o'clock, he came back. They went back upstairs again to under dollars change hands once more. And this time, it took even less time than first time round. And she said, really, this is money for jam. <laughs> how about tomorrow? You're going to be here tomorrow? No. On fast, you know, he won't be here tomorrow because I have to fly back to Ireland first thing in the morning. Ireland, huh? <laughs> what part of Ireland do you go to? And he said, Well, I come from a place called Inchigile. She said, Hey, <laughs> this is spooky. My mum lives in Inchigile. I know, she gave me $400 to bring over to you. <laughs> I think I was right about the uh, the horrors. Anyway, yes, yeah. Um, 